Flysky FSI6S and I'm going to try and put the and show you how to put the self-centering kit that you get with this particular model of radio into the system. So looking at the manual that we have online you need to take off the rubber uh, handles so flipping the unit over it says use a pair of tweezers uh, it looks like there's some tabs here so I found those tabs and you literally just literally find those tabs and you unhook with a pair of tweezers and actually I might use a sort of flat blade just to help me move that out there we go I find the flat blade is a bit better actually so there we go so we now take out the we gently maneuver those out there we are then it says remove the screws we've got four screws on the outside so there we go locate the screws like so so that's one and this is the second one and the third one fourth one we are so then we need to open up the box carefully and let's just open up the box there we go and I think there must be a cable somewhere so for the sake of making this a bit easy I'm gonna unplug the cables there's two cables at the side, one here and one here. You can't get them wrong, so that we can take the back off. So put that to one side. So here we have. So this is the one we want to change. That's so the one over on this side. And we want to put in the kit here. So we need to loosen the four screws that hold these in. So it's these small screws here that it's referring to. So we need to do that. Again, that's one. It's two. three and four so we need to remove <coughs> this spring here I'm a bit concerned with this spring but uh, let's remove this like it says So now we've got that removed and the four screws removed. So we need to take out, we need to just wiggle this connector out as best we can. I'm just trying to a bit fiddly, but we'll wiggle it out. There we go, I think we're coming now. Just excuse my fat fingers. There we go. So we've wiggled that out. So we should now that we've got that out, this should there we go, that's the end piece. Look at there. It's almost like a um almost like a bearing holder if you like. Think of it like a bearing holder. We just need to wiggle this one out. There's one on the top here too. There we go. There we are. So there's the other bearing holder. Okay, so now we've got our 
lever out. So now it says for this we need to pop in our uh, pop in our seat assembly. So some small parts here. And um, some little tiny, I think you see them, a spring and a couple of um, pins, if you like. So we need to pop those in as well. So let's do this. There we are. So we've got our assembly there. So there we go. So I'm assuming this is... I'm going to try and bring this in. You've got this pin assembly like this. It's like got a screw through there. And you've got this one like a cam. That goes in this assembly here. And then we've got to maneuver the spring to fit got to move with the spring to fit at the cam. We've got the little cam area where we just put in the bottom area and this top spring here we need to hook the spring and then screw this through down. So we've got to do that now. Let's hook the spring. Yeah. <laughs> my little fat fingers. My fat pork sausages of fingers. So it hooks over like that and then this hooks over like that. And then that goes in one, and that goes in the other. And I think the idea is we're going to try and get this onto these areas in there. So let's hook that one on. That's hooked on. Let's hook the spring on. Like so, there we go. So that's, let's see if I can bring that up closer. And you can see that the spring is here. That's on this bit. And then the, the arm that goes across the saddle, like a saddle arm. You've got to put the pins in, in this side, one that side. There we are. <laughs> There we go, so that's better. The pins are in now. Let's put the bearing on this side, bearing from our cam hold on this side. There we go. Okay, so there we go. So that's now in. As you can see, the pins are in. So now we can screw the screws back in. So again, don't go too mad with these screws. Just picking these up with my magnetic screwdriver. It's sort of got a little bit of magnetism, which helps. Oh, put the couple up. There we go. And then we'll catch this on. And remember, this is the first time I've actually done this. So um, what you find is the more you do the, these, you might get a bit better at them, but I'm probably not likely to do another one. So, so screw these into place. That's one. They weren't too, you know, overly tight to begin with. Two. Three, four, looks good. Just nip, just make sure they're nipped up, which they are. There we go. 
then plug the little cable back in like so looks like we've got the centering now so in case of now pop the case back together so again remembering to put your cabling back in they can only go in one way as well so um, you can see these are their own seating positions on there on the board and pop the case back together and then your four screws pop those back in tighten those down so I always go back one turn If you go back a sort of half a turn, you can catch the thread that you already had in there, so you don't cross thread. Coming up. And then once you've put these screws in place, you then put the handles back on. And the handles go back in, so you manoeuvre the front end in. Just sort of jer -jer jiggle it into place. There we are. So just sort of maneuver that front end in. Same again on the other side. So if I can see, I can show you how to put those back in. You just sort of fiddle them into place. There we go. And then same again for the back section those back into place and maneuver them back into place there we go and now we have the throttle position all uncentered and it's self centers ready for us to use for our next project so we are Going to update the i6s using FlySky's systems. So you just log on to FlySky and pick the product that we need. And in this case, we need the i6. And you then just pop yourself over to the download page and you'll find the firmware version should be 2.0.0.68 so you download that onto your computer so once you've got that on your computer you then double click this and open it up um, you may get some error messages and then you connect your using the cable to come with your i6 you connect this to your controller like so then you just, on your laptop, you run the update and then you go to your system okay, so firmware update and then you continue and you'll find you need to then hit the update because it tells you ready for the update there we go so this then flashes the system as you can see there there we go nearly done successful this thing goes back into normal you remove this Press and hold this, open up, there we are. Now we can go to their functions. And now we can set our switch. You can set this, switch A, so that's this switch. And again, this is thank you to um, 
Bob at Hobby Comsets here. He's done a, he gave me the initial for the um, i, the i6x on the i6, um, but it's the same for this. So you go into here, your rate x and your exponentials, and you set the rate up and down. So you need to set that to 75. And then for channel two, uh, sorry, that's for channel two. Then for channel four, again, set that up and down. There we are, come out of there. So that's now done those. And you scroll down to your auxiliary channels. So channel five, you set for this three position switch. And channel six is for switch A. There we are. So that's how you, you just set these, you just touch them and you set them for a switch and then select what switch it is. It depends what you want. So if you want to switch, if you want to, if you want to, the STs, it changes. So we want to switch. So switch A, come back out. So now we should find that if we go back out and swipe to the right, we should be able to do our Channel three, there we go, that's channel three, channel four, and then if you hit the switch, you can see channel four move to the 100% mode. There we are, so you can see the channel four move to the 100% mode. And the same again, I'm gonna try this on the other, on the other hand, so you can see there, channel two, if I hit the switch, which is this one, and then channel two goes to full. Turn the switch off, there you go, 75, there you are. So that's now programmed according to what we need. There we are, and channel five, so you've got uh, low gear, middle gear, high gear. Like Bob said. So thank you, Bob, from Hobby Concepts. That's really helped me program my transmitter uh, ready for my MFC unit. So a uh, big thanks and a big shout out. He actually he emails you the um, instructions as well. So he's a lovely guy. So do check him out. So uh, this is it. This is now ready and programmed for me. We've got our self-centering. We've done that now and we are ready to roll. And uh, Go from there. This this transmitter, by the way, can do lots of things. You've got lots of set settings, um, sounds, and everything else. So yeah, there we are. So it is quite a simple touch. Go in, do the rates, do the systems, throttle curves, auxiliary channels, mixing. Oh, the fail safe. Fail safe. Let's check the fail safe. Ah, channel three. So you see, my fail safe is off at the moment. We want the fail safe to be on, um, and I want it to go when if it loses signal, go to zero. Um, so that's I'm happy with that. So that's um, yeah, you can change that. So that's fine. So that's fail safe is now zero, as well. So we need to we need to make sure the fail safe is in there. There we are. So that's all done. Um, you can change the auxiliary channels and things like Bob's. You can change different ones. I've got six. You've got seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so you've got plenty of channels uh, on this radio. There we are. So anyway, that is the I. 6S um, programmed and ready for the Tamiya lorry and uh, the R620. There we are. Right. See you soon.